Welcome. This live stream of the June 2021 Sandoval's Board of Directors meeting is simulcast on the official communications Facebook page, Sandoval Cape Coral, and also on Sandoval Neighbors Synergy. Viewing of this meeting is also available for your convenience 24-7 on the YouTube channel, Sandoval Video Box, and Sandoval's website, www.livesandoval.com. Consider subscribing to support Sandoval Video Box on YouTube by clicking both the subscribe button and bell to be notified of future meetings and presentations. The meeting will begin shortly. If you, as the viewers, have any comments or recommendations you would like to see in future live streams, email your comments to sandovalvideobox at gmail.com. Sandoval Video Box thanks you for your support and participation by watching this meeting. Sandoval residents, and welcome to the June 24th, 2021 Sandoval Community Station Board Meeting. I'd like to call the meeting to order at 6.03 p.m. Stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. To roll call President Cooney present. Vice President Bernard? Present. Secretary Zanfandino? Present. Member Conway? Present via a phone call. Member Palmer? Melanie? Oh, she must be on mute. Come back to her. Member Spooner? Present in person. Member Stout? Here. We established a quorum. We established. Proof of service? Affidavit. We've established a quorum and we have proof, proof of service. Any uh, resident comments uh, on agenda topics? No, we don't have any resident comments on agenda topics. Okay. We'll move for approval of the past meeting minutes. Here's just one correction. Number 17, it should be Covenant Committee, not Convenient Committee. That's okay. Yep. Oh. <laughs> So we'll change that. Okay. Noted. I'll entertain a motion to accept the past meeting minutes as amended. I'll make the motion to pass. Second? Second. Second. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Moving on to the board president's report. Good evening, Santa Barbara residents. As your new board enters its fourth month, there continues to be a flurry of uh, activity, bringing challenges, which we as a board anticipated moving forward. This board continues to remain laser focused on completing the tasks that present themselves to us and to resolve them to the best of our abilities. After struggling for three months, we are finally at a point where our treasurer, Bill Tubb, feels confident that our financials and our monthly financial reports are in good order. Bill has worked diligently with First Services Residential in resolving the various issues we had, changing the financials over from Pope Golf to FSR. During the past month, you probably have noticed that both the old and new clubhouses have had the new banana cream exterior applied. Work on the landscaping around the new building has also started and is beginning to take shape. As I mentioned during this past month's update, had it not been for defective flooring that Stevens required a vendor to replace, we would have had the 
original building released to us by now. Stevens has been very diligent in managing subcontractors to make sure that their workmanship meets the expectations and specifications of both Stevens and Sandoval. Once Stevens is at the point, they will release the buildings back to us and we can begin the process of moving equipment and furniture into the buildings, which I'm sure many have uh, long anticipated that, particularly this last year or so with the pandemic. I have tasked our fantastic amenities director, Lorraine Welch, to begin formulating a grand opening event and community event to commemorate the opening of the buildings. After suffering through the stress of the pandemic, everyone is anxious to get back into the gym and enjoy all the indoor amenities and then that the new building has to offer. We've all heard uh, people talk about the COVID-19, referring to the 19 pounds they put on in the last year and a half. So hopefully we'll be able to shed those. Tonight you're gonna hear a synopsis of three months of intense efforts to determine the course of action on the future of bulk television and internet services. The process has been painstaking to say the least, which much effort put into it by Steve Casens and his telecommunications committee, which I thank you for Steve, and Ron Spooner and the negotiations committee, which I thank you for Ron. The community owes a debt of uh, gratitude to each of them and their fellow committee members for their tireless efforts. <clears throat> To those commenting that this board is not transparent or simply not paying attention or choosing not to take advantages of the sources of open communication we offer. As residents, you are welcome to attend all board meetings. Live stream them from the comfort of your own home or simply watch them in a more convenient time. Residents are also provided a very detailed monthly update so there's every opportunity to stay informed for those who wish to do so. I also found it very frustrating that only an average of 55% of our residents actually open and read the monthly update that, that we've prepared for the past three months. One can only assume that the same 45% do not attend or watch the board meetings and most likely the same ones are the, are the ones claiming a lack of transparency. So you have the opportunity to, to be here tonight, we have five people in the room for those of you that aren't here and aren't here because of board business. I hope when we continue to move these uh, meetings back into the clubhouse that we receive much better attendance. We're doing this for the people of Sandoval and doing our best to remain transparent. Lastly, I'd like to congratulate all of our graduates from kindergarten through college for their success and wish them the best. Sandoval's most uh, precious commodity, our children and our grandchildren, will now be out in full force for the summer. Please be uber attentive to your driving habits and keep an eye out for our children on their bikes when they're just out and about playing. Thank you very much. Board Treasurer's Report, Bill Tubb. Good evening. Treasurer's report, June 24th, 2021. Item one, May 31st, 2001, 2021 financial highlights. Item A, the finance committee met on June the 22nd with all members, Anita Zanfrandito, the board liaison, Casey Pinella, the general manager, and William Tubb, the treasurer, present. The May 21 financials were received on the evening of June the 21st and were reviewed. I assume the board members all got copies of the the financials. I, I sent them to the Finance Committee. I didn't send them to the board. Item B, as stated by our president in his report, we're confident the accounting for our day-to-day -day operation expenses by FSR is accurate other than the following items in C, D, and E below. Item C, per our audit of the December 31, 2020, the Sandoval HOA had $1,240,560 in cash and equivalents as well as $894,169 in certificates of deposits in our telecom fund. FSR took over accounting on January the 1st, 2021, and they've changed the labeling on the bank accounts on our balance sheets so that the reader of our financial statements cannot identify those funds. Item D, 
The approved Sandoval HOA budget for 2021 called for funding $44,807 per month for the months of January 2021, February 2021, and March 2021 for a total of $134,421 additional funding to the telecom fund by March 31st, 2021, and then stop. FSR has reported $11,202 per month funding for a total of $56,010 through May 31st, 2021. This is a shortage of $78,411 as of May 31st, 2021. FSR was alerted to this issue at our first meeting with Mark Landis, the head of F F FSR Accounting, on April the 9th, but they have yet to correct it. Item E. The Finance Committee would like Mr. Mark Landis, head of accounting at FSR, to attend our July Finance Committee meeting, along with Mr. Steve Harshman, to give a full and complete accounting for our bulk telecom fund assets from the December 31, 2020 audited numbers up to the numbers reported on our June 30, 2021 balance sheet and to include a reconciliation of all contributions to and reductions from said funds. I have prepared uh, this document from my understanding of, of the uh, facts and we should agree. Uh, item F, Mark was instructed to conduct, could contact our auditor, Tony Gregory, CPA, prior to issuing the April financials so that we could be assured that First Service Residential is preparing our financial statements in according with Tony's understanding, Tony's audit and his understanding of GAAP. We have had no indication that that communication ever took place. Item two, one area of concern identified by the Finance Committee was the $137,053.65 in delinquent homeowner accounts, as indicated on page three, the executive survey summary of the financial statements, which, Casey, have those been posted to the website? Okay, when will they be posted? Okay, so the homeowners can look at that tomorrow and see that. Um, and finally, number three, as of May the 25th, 2021, Stevens Construction has billed the HOA $1,687,825.08 less $65,376.96 in retainage for the clubhouse expansion project. This puts us at 81.29% complete and leaves $453,890.88 balance to bill. At this time, we are on schedule and we are on budget. Do you have any questions? The Walt Telecom account? That is correct. I did. They've never seen this, anything like this nationwide. This is their first experience with it. Does, that, does FSR understand that a reconciliation is needed within the next month for us to do an appropriate accounting? And finalize all expenses associated with the expansion? I hope after tonight's report they do, if, if not before. Will you um, request that they, their financial people be present at this next meeting so in the event that this reconciliation isn't done, we can sit down and do it after the meeting? I requested they be at the next finance committee meeting. Would you like them at the next board meeting as well? Well, the finance committee will take place before the board meetings are correct correct two days so if it's not done at the board meet at the finance meeting tell them when i'm at the board meeting come to the board meeting okay um and finally um just to make sure i understand this correctly we are funding the CenturyLink account or the telecom account through march 31st at which point we would have fully paid for the expansion is that correct that is correct and at that point forty four thousand dollars a month will go into a reserve account specifically for our um, landscaping in the event of a hurricane. I don't follow exactly what you're saying. The 44000 per month for the first three months went into the telecom. After April 1 through the end of the year, 
the 44,000 was added to our operating expenses to balance the budget. So it was that 44,000 doesn't directly go into reserves. We did add $125,000 contingency fee to our budget, which will hopefully create a profit, which will add to our fund balance. And the, the board, not this board, but the previous board voted uh, once the clubhouse expansion project is complete, any funds left in the bulk telecom fund would be transferred to reserves for a named storm damage fund. So um, why didn't we go with basic insurance rather than self-insure for the, the um, cost named storm damage? The, the potential damage is pretty well equal to the annual premium to do that. So you'd be paying to replace all your trees every single year even though we've never had that experience and don't expect to have it anytime soon. So it's just cost prohibitive to do that. We're better to self-insure and build reserves. And if that should happen, we'll pay to fix it ourselves. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions of Bill? Thank, Thank you, you, Bill. General Manager's report, Casey. Hey, good evening, everyone. Uh, quick update here. We've sent out um, around 60 communications over the last month and we'll continue to do a better job communicating to all residents. Uh, the audit is available on Live Sandoval. You can uh, take a look at that or request it through the office. And an update on uh, maintenance. John Adamsky, the new uh, maintenance technician, is doing an incredible job uh, really turning around the community with much needed uh, maintenance items including items that are on the risk committee's list. He's working with the city to come out. Um, they were actually out today to repair some items throughout the uh, community. We've ordered extra towing signs that will be installed throughout the parking lots, the dog park parking lots for additional K&W signs. Um, let's see, maintenance projects that are currently Ongoing, the paving project did take place. However, there are uh, multiple items that uh, change order items weren't, we weren't able to do those during the time that they were on property. So we did a second walkthrough, adding in several items throughout the community that need the paving company to come back out and take care of that. Uh, we have the fencing project that's uh, underway at the dog park, and then also two to three different areas throughout the community that proposal was supposed to come over yesterday. It didn't come over from Tropical Fence, so I expect it'll come over uh, tomorrow, and then we can present that to the board. Uh, pressure washing has started, and that'll continue on. Estimated completion date is July the 7th. Uh, bocce courts, uh, we've repaired several uh, pavers throughout that area. Pressure washing will take place to spruce up this area, and then this evening some proposals that have been sent to the board will be discussed. Pickleball project is ongoing. There was a pause in their work, um, and when we reached out to them, they just simply said, um, well, there was an invoice that got sent to a resident rather than the management office, and there were a couple things, plus the weather. So that's supposed to be kicking back off uh, next week, and I think there's a couple weeks left on that project, and then the basketball courts as well will be taken care of. We did order uh, for the basketball backboard, the square on the back decal. So that should be coming in soon. New nets were installed at the basketball courts. So a lot of upkeep on the community has taken place. Um, and then we have ongoing landscape projects as well. Um, so that's a quick update there. And I don't, uh, the other items will be addressed later in the meeting. Thank you, Casey. Clubhouse improvement. Huh? Um, our committee met yesterday with Stevens Construction to review the budget change orders and the timeline. The good news is we are still on schedule. We expect to get our certificate of occupancy in two to three weeks for the new building. Um, so we are on schedule. We're also on budget. That we are at a point that we have clarity in the remaining work and we can say with confidence that this project will come in on budget. It's razor thin. We are right on that line. Um, 
but um, it will come in on budget. Uh, we also had a second committee meeting uh, yesterday to meet with a interior designer to review plans for interior lighting, accents such as artwork and furniture. Our committee will be uh, focused on pulling the final pieces together to ensure that these residents can begin to enjoy the um, new clubhouse. Um, we are hoping to do a uh, ribbon cutting in early August. Um, and there are still a few uh, items that need to be done for the existing clubhouse. There's some repairs to windows. There's a little bit of painting that needs to be done. We're going to be changing out some light fixtures on the exterior end. There's some loose wires. Um, there's going to be um, some uh, repair to some of the gutters. The reason we're doing this is we don't want to pay the percentage to Stevens Construction. Frankly, we're able to handle this privately. So that will, will be taking place in the next two weeks. Um, one item to note, um, we are walking through now for the final approval for the existing clubhouse. Um, a resident, uh, a talented resident, Jacob Myers, helping us walk through and identify every issue that's not acceptable to us. So they got a lot of blue tape, unfortunately, today that they need to fix. Um, one of the major items is the uh, floor of the weight room. Um, unfortunately, there are some areas that are lifted. There's some glue on the floor, and it's an expensive floor. Um, they gave us the option of having it torn out. Unfortunately, the new floor would not be available until late August. Um, it's my understanding we have an agreement that we're going to keep the existing floor until the new floor comes in, and then they're going to replace it with a brand new floor. When I say existing floor, I'm talking about the new floor they installed that is just not up to our standard. Um, It'll take place over two to three days, sometime in late August, maybe early September, where they'll move the equipment to one side, put the new floor in, move the equipment to the other side. Therefore, when we do the opening, everything should be up and going, but I just would uh, put the little caveat there that that floor will be replaced because it's not up to our standard. Um, and that's it. So, thank you. Thank you, Ron. Taylor Morrison. Okay. Um, we have uh, a, a, an important date coming up, June 29th, in which we have mediation, which we will make some uh, demands for them. Um, and uh, we will have multiple board members and committee members attending that mediation. Um, also, um, our resident volunteer, Jim Swigert, recently walked every single lake in the community with marine engineers and environmental cons uh, consultants regarding lake erosion and the construction of the lakes. We are particularly interested in phase three construction of the lakes based on the fact that we're still under a transition from builder, from the builder to um, resident run community. Uh, I'd just like to take the time to thank Jim. He spent a long, hot day, did a significant follow up with these engineers and consultants. And Jim has done this consistently for years and years. And um, just personally, thank you. Uh, he's you know, he speaks his mind, but he puts the work in, frankly. So again, Jim, thank you. It's invaluable to us. And that's the report on Taylor Morrison. I'm going to jump to Indira, and we'll come back to Sure. Um, I got another one. Yeah, you got one there. Rick, you want to do the Invira? Yeah. The Invira Valuation Ad Hoc Committee Report. Rick Devine is the committee chair. Okay, I've, I've had Invera down here, senior management, three times we have walked this property from one end to the other. I've brought in Aaron Morrison, who is a mechanical engineer. So now there's, the games have, uh, has officially stopped, okay? Um, I now have finally figured out who's in charge of what. Uh, I just got that done yesterday, last night. I'll be getting with you, Ron, you need to take and verify what they're telling me is what their contract says. Because I do believe everybody, over the years, everybody's went like this. And I think everybody's just went, okay, just pay it, just pay it, just pay it. Okay. And Vera's also rolling out a new notification system uh, on gate strikes. We're at the top of the list, even though ours are starting to come down slowly but surely. When it comes out, I'll tell you. Um, We've had eight, eight, we have had nine gate strikes. There was one last night. Um, five of veterans, 
three at Trafalgar. We can correct these. You may not like my idea, but, you know, you don't want to stop, I'll make you stop. If that's the way you guys want to go, it's, it's, it's doable. And I can pick it up and move. I can move these speed humps wherever I want to, I want to move them because I got to go in between multiple loops because they've been changed so many times over the years. Um, I've had 18,746 cars that went through the visitor's gate alone, not counting what's going on on the other side. Mechanical concerns. Six at Trafalgar. One of those was in Veras. The rest, exit gates, that's all Sandoval. That's on, that's on us, okay? I don't... Somebody, in their infinite wisdom, decided to take two gates and bolt them together. You got one big sale. That's what it's doing. You went through there, I believe, Ron. Didn't you see the gate open and closing all by itself, I believe, last month? Okay, that's what's exactly happened. The wind catches it, and it goes back and forth. Because you deferred maintenance. You took one side of the gate because the motor went out, you stripped it, and then you bolted them together. Now, let me tell you about the other side where it's, it, sheared, it sheared the hinges right off. It's a 5-8. It's nothing but a 5-8 J uh, hinge. It ain't going to work. I guarantee you it's going to go back down on the ground. Get it. You have two choices. Put it back together. The motor that is working is one of 2012. Along with the gate arm, along with your arm assembly, one of 2012. The warranty is five years. Do you think it's going to last much longer? The ones down at the gate are all from 2012. So you can't take one and put the other. Bite the bullet. Let's only cry once instead of two and three times. Okay? New gate, single motor, unbolted, two brand new motors. Your choice. We can figure out uh, however you want to do it, whatever's the cheapest. I'm going to say you want to move quickly on that. Unless you want to come out there and help us hold the thing up. Because it is going to come down again. Um. You also have another problem. In Benita Bay's infinite wisdom, there's a the plate is actually bolted to the pillar. Okay. Well, there's only a, there's only a three eighths um, flag going into that. There's three quarter inch holes. So the next time, after we put it up, guess what? It just it walked right off the it walked right through that plate and they're like that on every single place i've went and looked at them so that's going to be coming down the line your middle gate the motors out there one's from 13 i think one's from 12 those will be your next two you're going to be replacing on your gates if you go with a new gate do not do what you did down on veterans there's nothing there. They're decorative. I can, I can bend them with my hands. You got to put some instructional integrity in there. Easiest way to do is what you want to do. You got to figure out how much they weigh. Okay, it's not that hard. Just take every piece, you measure it, add them together. You know, I've got a million books that tells you what's what every piece of metal in the world weighs. You add them up, okay, and make sure you don't overload it, okay. You, you you don't, the heavier you make it, the worse you're going to make it, if, especially if you're only going to use one big gate. Remember, that thing's long. It's 17 foot, 4 inches. So you want to keep that in mind. We also just replaced the gate arm. It should have been replaced out three or four years ago. That would go from the motor to the gate. If you sit there and watch, that thing would go like this. Back and forth. All there is was a bunch of slop in there. It finally got replaced. So you should be good down there for a while, hopefully. We're going to have, we should have a full report done by the end of the month for your next meeting. Um, then we'll, we're going to do, make, we're going to, we want to change a lot of things. 
try to get the traffic to flow a little easier, knock down, the, you know, the damage being done. Um, but I'm still chasing bills that I just got last night. What I'm looking for is I want to see what's been done in the past. Because I there's there's something that doesn't sit right with me. I'll figure it out. And I need I need to load up my I need to get all the ammunition. If that makes sense. Um, second of all, I don't believe that you should have a contractor ever work unattended. Okay. Now if San, now I know that's Sandoval's thing, but if I'm going to do the gates, I want to be standing on them. So far I have been, but I need to be notified. Okay. That's you tell me yes or no. Okay, and I don't think I'm wrong in that. No, no, I'm not going to be that quite yet. I have enough tape. <laughs> no, it's, it's it's a it's a in all my years, and I've worked from the fourth largest contractor in the world to mom and pop things. It just doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. And I don't care how much you trust them. It's the path of least resistance. That's what we all take. It's human nature. Um, I just want to get this thing cleared up. It's been going on for four years. Enough is enough. And I'm starting to see where I don't think it's all in Vera. You know, I do have exactly what they claim to. That's in Vera on the top. That's Sandoval on the bottom. Who's got more stuff? Sandoval. But I need, I need to know what's on the legal con. That will tell me, that will tell us about what we want to know. Um, and I do, trust me, I got a very on speed call. That's basically where I'm at for now. We'll know more. Um, but we got to do something with the exit gate on Trafalgar. It's, it's going to happen sooner or later. So, yeah. uh, first, thank you, Rick. Um, we've obviously put the heart into this, and it's, I think, our number one issue, frankly, um, are the gates. Um, I've always been a bit uncomfortable because we're working with two systems here. And what's happened in the past is our electrician would point at Envira, and Envira would point at the electrician. And there was often no resolution which would delay these gate repairs. So my first question to you is, do we have any option to integrate these two systems so we have one entity responsible for now, them? Here's here's the way Invera works. If an Invera didn't install it, no, we're not touching it. That's, that's, and that's, I, I, I would agree with what they're saying. But I don't think anybody knew this going in, you know? I don't think we knew the whole story about how great of a big deal this was and uh, how it was going to stop tailgating. Hell, the, the residents tailgate more than, than the visitors do. And I've, spent, I've sat up there for hours and hours and hours and hours, and nobody stops, including myself. <laughs> so I know, I know none of the rest of you do. Um, no, that Ron, there's no way to... There's no way to do it. Has there been discussions to um, keep keep the gates open between, say, eight, 8 and 8 or 9 to 5, um, extend the arm barriers so bikes can't get through and we don't have trespassing issues, but that would seem to take a lot of stress off the gates, and that's the majority of our issues. I can't – I don't know of any place that has their gates closed – Forever. I mean, all you're doing is, I mean, it. this is the most expensive amenity I think Sandoval owns. It's a constant maintenance. Do you think that's a reasonable option to take the load off the actual gates and it's still I would open up. I would open up the exit gates. Now, if now if people are dumb enough to come up the wrong way, I don't, I, you know, what do you want me to do about it? Okay. Maybe put a sign up there that says, do not, wrong way. I mean, I mean, if you're that dumb, I mean, come on. Well, I'm not proposing the arms. I'm saying we keep the arms in place okay, because but, Invera but, is responsible for that equipment. And those no, 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 no. In those arms, two coming in at veterans, 
two coming in at Trafalgar. The rest of them are all Sandoval's. Yep. Well, we need to obviously have a conversation where we upgrade our equipment to put it under the umbrella of Embira because that's odd to me, frankly. That's the way it was set up. Well, we can improve it, and maybe we need to have some uh, communication. Uh, DC? There you are. (laughs) Um, Obviously, uh, you and your committee is communicating because a number of these options you presented to us, we want to make sure you're communicating with Casey because, frankly, on the day-to-day, we're not going to be making those decisions. What happens is proposals uh, get brought to our attention, and then we decide on the bigger issues. But it's imperative that this communication um, is present and we get some uh, options in order to help improve the situation. From what I'm seeing so far, the gates and the motors are sandals. Okay? The barrier arms and the assemblies Coming in to veterans, you have two. Coming in on Trafalgar, you have two. Those are in Veris. Everything else is yours. Now, I'm not quite sure. In tells me, let's see. Let me look at their list here. Down on Pine Island. Now, I know Pine Island, that was in the turnover, so I'm God only knows what... I'm not sure what happened up there, okay? Down there, they're saying the kiosk, four, four overall cameras, two license plate cameras, entrance, uh, and I'm to visit all readers, and the stoplight. They're claiming that's all they're in charge of. So every one of those arms, I mean, an Invera arm is square, mm-hmm. and it's red, and if you, you can actually tell the difference on the uh, gate arm assembly, lifts it up, they're completely different. Can we get a proposal to, at least for all the gate arms, to be under the umbrella of an Avera? Because we're paying. Avera won't touch it. Well, maybe we need to evaluate the cost of new equipment versus the cost of these constant repairs because we're getting nickel and dime to death. I just just told you the one one down on Trafalgar was built one of 2012. I can go get you the numbers, okay? Now, the, the exit down on Veterans to the south, that was just replaced. You know, that was the one that when the arm came up, the whole thing would rock. Okay. So whatever they cost. You, you know, eventually you got you to start changing things. All we're doing is making more and more people mad. Well, when we do change them, we want to make sure they're under Invera, I would imagine. You're so never going to get it. You're not, you're not going to get them under Invera. If they're installing new equipment, frankly, it's their equipment, and that's it. He he won't, they won't go anywhere near it, anything else. That's just the way they do business. Well, then perhaps we need to reevaluate our. Well, the contract is coming up. So okay, just last question yeah. for you. Um, it sounded like we had nine gate strikes. Were we able to determine how many of those were residents and? Uh, non-residents, and were, were we able to realize uh, any fines? Okay, you, you had one last night was a contractor. I just happened to be going through there, and she was standing there. Unfortunately, she didn't speak good English. I do have a picture of her license plate. The other one that I know about was a dog, a dog vendor that came through. Um, we've came through um, Trafalgar. I mean, it was something. You should have had something on that. I, I know Invera caught that one on camera. You got to remember on your exits, there's nothing there. So, um, but the, I guess, if you want, if you want to, you can put traffic humps in there. They go from two inches to six inches. I mean, you can get obnoxious with. They lag in. They're portable. They lag in. You can pick them up, move them. You know, if you want, take them anywhere you want. Now, I don't. That that would be completely up to you. That will be in the report that when we get done. Okay. You know, we'll 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 throw that in there, along with signage and a lot of other stuff. Well, thank you, Rick. That's if anyone else has anything. No, and I guess in the old adage, it looks like we got what we paid for. Well, and, uh, I don't. I, I, I honestly right don't. You know, 
there's nobody to, there's nobody that I can go to. Sean's gone, so I mean he was I'm sure he was behind this a hundred percent. I would go to former board members, but I've heard them stand up and ask the same questions. So that, that isn't going to give me any answers. So now we're going to go through the bills, and I'll go by what Invera tells us. You guys take the contract, match it up. I'm going to match up their drawings with what they're telling me because I now have my hands on them. And then we'll just, you know, the, the contract's coming up in next May. I think it's got a 30-day beforehand. You got to tell them, and that was a five-year contract with liquidated damages on Sandoval. Should we try to get out of it? You know, one of those you know fantastic uh, contracts, and, and you can decide what you want to do. Um, and the pedestrian gate down at Veterans. As soon as I get to see the tape. Normally, you have two hinges on a gate that had four welded. I used to live right across from that gate when I lived down in Somerville. So I know I got a little idea what goes on. The spring. The spring there is is there for a reason. One, it ensures it gets shut. But after we get this all done, they're going to take and put a rock up there and prop it open. So I'm trying to outguess what's going to happen next, you know, but I don't, I've got to see the tape. I, I don't, you know, I wasn't there when the contractor put that thing together. Uh, Gary, you, you remember the first time I, what did I say? I said it would, when I got to the car, I said, it'll never last. And it lasted six hours before it got, I mean, and it's literally ripped, the gate was ripped off the hinges. So are you able to get access to the video? You have any issues with gaining access to the video? It, that camera was just redone, so you should have a clear view. Yeah, we have. Yeah, everyone yeah. has login, but management or IP address for um, the IP address, we have it. We're researching it. We're like seven hours in. Yeah, you, so I had my hands on that gate like at eight that morning on a Friday. I noticed the spring was missing. Went down there. We know what we know where that went. That's another. I I, I don't. It's easy when something goes missing. Right. So this is just something's a jarred. Right. So you literally have to watch every single and stop. Would, someone's there. And I didn't check that gate again until Saturday morning, like at eight thirty, nine thirty. So it would have happened. She's got a long bunch of hours until they see my smiling face up there. Well, and we've already seen it several times, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, so, and we can find out, you know. Vandalism issue, I'd certainly hope that we would take action beyond the HOA. Well, that's that's uh, above my pay grade. Okay, so we should also talk to Vera about uh, motion detected cameras that only turn on when there's motion that is detected, which really cuts down on the time yeah, the that you days. have to watch. So you only get have to worry about it when there's yes. activity, which may be an option. Any other questions? Rick, thank you. Somebody. Gary, I have a question. This is Kathy. Go ahead. Um, Rick, can you just explain why are we not seeing the gate hits at Pine Island? Is it because there are newer motors and newer equipment? What What's the explanation that we're not seeing the um, the hits at Pine Island? I, I could tell you. I could tell you. It, it doesn't. I don't think it gets near the use. I mean, Trafalgar, everybody and their brother. That starts at six in the morning, and that's generally a raceway until like nine, nine thirty. And I, I just don't think you get the traffic down there. Okay. All right. Because I never get a report. And Vera sends me a report if somebody somebody strikes the gate, uh, along with others. Right. I I can't remember the last time I've seen one down. Be honest with you. Yeah, but I agree with what Ron was saying about the possibility of um, opening up the exit gates, especially during that peak morning period with school and work rush. You know, from like six until nine on the exit gates, especially at Trafalgar. I would agree with that recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. 
Rick, thank you very much. You've uh, certainly taken ownership of uh, that committee, and I applaud you and the committee members for your efforts, and thank you for uh, all the time you're spending on it. He's there a lot. I see his car there all the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay, we'll move on to the uh, traffic Gary, control. <coughs> mentioning keeping the gates open during certain hours, uh, Cape Royal, they have gates also. Mm -hmm and they're open. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think that's something that we need to think about and maybe check with other communities and see if they're, see what Well, I agree. And when I had breakfast a couple of weeks ago with uh, Chief of Police, Anthony Sizemore, it was one of his recommendations was, why don't you just keep those gates open during the day? Yes. And yes. that's coming from law enforcement. So yes. I think it makes sense and something we need to take a, a hard look at. Thank you, Marilyn. Move on to the uh, Traffic Control Ad Hoc Committee report. Uh, Linda Amuni is the chair, and she serves on that. Um, also serving on that committee is Ed uh, Coronado. Uh, neither could be here. So Linda asked me to, um, I'm going to just uh, paraphrase her report. Um, they've done us uh, a couple things that they want to do is they're going to develop a survey to send out to the community on the importance of things of, uh, such as um, speed bumps, uh, uh, reflective posts in the crosswalks, um, cameras may be placed on the parkway, uh, a regularly scheduled awareness program, and some um, also some trimming of bushes at monuments where improve the site view of, of crosswalks. And they want to get a feel from the community of what's important to the community and, uh, moving forward. Um, that survey will probably go out sometime within the next couple of weeks. Um, they are getting estimates um, uh, for speed bumps is one of the things they've looked into. They met with many other HOAs in the area. They've toured other HOAs in the area, and many of them do have speed humps or speed bumps, whatever you want to call them. So they're simply going to get uh, a cost estimate and present that to us along with uh, – the solar signs, we used to have them here, I know, three or four years ago. In the crosswalk, there were those rectangular signs that said, stop for pedestrians and crosswalk. And that's another thing the chiefs recommended that that we reinstate because he feels that people subconsciously will come and slow down almost to a stop when they see stop and crosswalk and will sl and slow traffic down. Um, and that, that along with the awareness campaign, uh, uh, which will go out. So we will have some more answers from them in the next month or so. I'd like to thank uh, Linda and Ed, their, their committee as well, has done a yeoman's job in, uh, in a short period of time of uh, identifying the problems and potential solutions that they'll present to the board uh, for, for their recommendations as we move forward. We'll move on to the uh, cable, internet, um, uh, cable Internet Committee. Steve? Steve Cases, committee chair. Uh, we uh, have gotten a lot of work done in the last month. Uh, we received bids in uh, late May. Uh, we spent the last month dissecting those. Uh, we had over 480 pages of material we had to coalesce from five different vendors. Uh, for the most part, all of the proposals were uh, succinct. We had a few more questions we had to go back to the vendors with. Uh, but within a week and a half, uh, we had a, a master spreadsheet which broke everything down. The committee met. We reviewed that. We felt there was a clear indication of uh, what our recommendation should be to the board. So then we spent the next two weeks uh, making sure that we – uh, had access to board members in an effort to uh, run them through the same spreadsheet that we had developed. And at that point, uh, we had gotten it as far as we can get it as a committee. We've now turned that over to the board, and uh, they will then take it from here, make that decision, and recommendation to the homeowners as to what our best course of action will be based on all the data that we gathered. 
and it was a large spreadsheet, <laughs> a very large spreadsheet. So we appreciate everyone's help and understanding and patience. Um, as far as I know, correct me if I'm wrong, Ron, are they going to turn us off at the end of the month? That's the plan. Okay, so. When they say turn us off specifically uh, cable. Yeah. But we, we will address the plan going forward. Um, we had an executive session this evening and got an update from our council, and we'll be able to expound upon that in a bit. Right. Steve, when did uh, when did you actually send the RFPs out? Uh, let's see. When did we do I have to look back on my calendar. It was uh, we gave them thirty days to respond, so it was early, uh, about I think April twentieth they went out with. And the, and the response date was the twenty fifth. And the reason I ask is there's a flurry on uh, of comments on uh, Facebook that the committee was dragging their feet and taking months to evaluate these contracts and. You know, I'd just like to hear from you about the timeline and uh, because sure. I know that's not true. Yeah. Uh, but it's easier to um, it's easier to convince people to fool people than it is to convince right. them to, with the truth. So. We spent 45 days. Uh, well, let, let's break it down this way. We spent a month early in the year uh, trying to get an idea what the overall scheme of the industry was. We then actually polled the, the residents to see what their thoughts were. Then we created another 30 days, created an RFP, a very detailed RFP, uh, both on the contract side as well as on a technical side. Then that was issued. We gave the vendors a month, and they all whined that they wanted more time, but we, we kept them to their uh, timeline. And then we spent... Uh, the committee only spent a week and a half doing the detailed evaluation. So we got through a lot of material in a week and a half with a, a, a condensation and a complete financial analysis uh, delivered to the board. So we felt that we, we moved as fast as we could. If that answers your question. It does answer my question. Thank you very yeah. much. Good. You guys did a great job and appreciate all the hard work by you and your committee. Right. Thank you. Any other questions for Steve? Uh, we'll move on uh, to the star of the show now, Ron, with the uh, contract committee report. Um, as you all know, a lot of time and effort went into this project to ensure that every option was evaluated. Two separate resident committees were involved. One committee, who was headed up by Steve Kaysen, who we just heard from, worked diligently to come up with a robust an exceptional RFP. We received many responses to that, to that RFP, which provided us with a complete understanding of our options regarding cable and internet. The committee spent a significant amount of volunteer time, and under some unfair political pressure, they marched on. The RFP committee comprised of Alice Short, Steve Kessens, sorry, Kessens, <laughs> Bill Dunker, Rita Purvis, Tom Naffel, and Melanie Palmer. Thank you for all your efforts. Your efforts were not in vain. Um, it was through your efforts that our committee was able to negotiate and put some real iron in our words. Um, and we had the backdrop of all your RFP responses to let them know that we meant business. The other committee, which took more of a legal approach, evaluating the contract and possible resolution of that contract, and which included our evaluation of litigation, any potential damages out there, um, and we had a significant legal team um, involved. Uh, Bill Dunker is part of that committee also. He is a contract attorney who's uh, been practicing over 35 years. Jonathan Huffman helped us evaluate litigation options. Um, also, we had our uh, HOA counsel, Rob Caves, who is, has previously negotiated uh, multiple resolutions with CenturyLink regarding um, similar, similar communities in, this, in the same position that we are. So he had that experience to understand where a, a good resolution or an exceptional resolution stood. Um, and I'm going to go over with you the progress of our negotiations. Our previous offer 
um, in light of the fact that they were dropping the cable portion, was to, ver to provide us an upgrade of 200 megabytes a month at the same price with a 4.5% increase for the remainder of the contract. The remainder of the contract is five and a half years. Um, we rejected that offer. Then they moved to 300 megabytes at a cost of $35 a month. We rejected that offer and we countered at 500 megabytes and said that we would not consider anything less than that. Up and down, yes. Um, they offered us 500. But we still didn't agree to that because, um, our, uh, frankly, the terms of our contract were not satisfactory. There were some issues with our contract. Um, when you're evaluating these contracts, you have to look at your ability to enforce them. And unfortunately, there were some provisions in there that weren't to our benefit. Um, for example, jurisdiction. If we wanted to engage CenturyLink in litigation, we would be filing out in Colorado. Um, that creates a significant amount of costs. Um, and there were a number of other provisions in the contract that uh, limited our position somewhat. So not only did we want the increase in speed, at the same current rate, we wanted some additional items. And I'm going to go over those additional items right now. We asked for the 500 megabytes at the current rate of $25 a month. And just to put this in, in some perspective, residents are currently paying an additional $35 a month to get that speed increase. Um, so those residents will no longer have to pay that additional money. Instead, they will be getting that upgrade free of charge and every resident would be getting that um, free of charge. We also ask them for no rate increase. Under the contract, they're able to increase, I believe it's 4.5% per year we said that we will only agree if they condition the new agreement on no rate increase for the remainder of 5.5 years. That's $25 a month for the next 5.5 years at 500 megabytes. We also asked for some clarity what happens after the contract. We asked for a one-year option to renew. So if we're at the end of those five years and we're satisfied, we would have the option to proceed um, with CenturyLink or we can look at other options. We also, there were certain sections of the contract modification of section 2.8 uh -huh. um, that provides CenturyLink's ability to move in a similar but alternative service. Frankly, we want to know who we're contracting with, and we thought that provision was particularly unfair. We also uh, told them we want to change the venue um, to Lee County. Um, their response was that they would be amenable to binding arbitration or moving to a federal district within Florida. So our jurisdiction will be Florida. Um, there was a termination fee provision 11.2 that was, in my mind, pretty unfair that allowed for CenturyLink to um, terminate the contract yet provide us no termination fee. However, if we terminated the contract, we would be on the hook for a significant termination fee. We asked for modification of that provision. Um, we are um, currently negotiating that provision. We have other modifications of the contract that we felt were unfair to Sandoval. Those issues are still awaiting approval from legal, but we're actively working on getting resolution to those contract issues. We have also requested additional uh, equipment be provided to the community. We have a tentative agreement, but we don't know time and scope yet, and we can provide that at a later date. Um, I will note that CenturyLink has confirmed that we have the capacity to be upgraded to 500 megabytes. They did note that there is the potential that some modems may not be uh, reaching that speed and will need to be upgraded on a case-by-case -case basis, but they assured us that they would have service techs out there to be handling that. Um, we did meet with um, Steve um, and Bill Dunker from the RFP committee and discussed um, what this CenturyLink offer, um, uh, we evaluated the CenturyLink offer. And it was my understanding from that they felt it was a very good offer in terms of resolution. If we were to proceed in this direction, we would still have the ability to see how the community feels when it comes to having a cable bulk service or a non-cable bulk service. Excuse me. 
Um, the reality is most communities are going towards streaming, Netflix, YouTube, television, um, but it's really reliant upon having a robust internet. And um, 4K televisions, for instance, take up a significant amount of bandwidth. Um, so it was very important for us to get some resolution prior to um, the cable being terminated because frankly it would really tax our current system. And under our current system, CenturyLink only guarantees us between 32 and 40 megabytes. So we would expect to have some significant failures. Um, I would also like to see, if we do proceed in this direction, some information sessions to explain to residents um, what their streaming options are. Frankly, I'll need to attend some of those because uh, I'm not really up to date on them, but I know um, there are some options for us to get local television. Um, I'd like to make a motion at this point, and the motion um, is subject to final negotiations. I move to agree to the modifications of our current CenturyLink contract and inter internet only based on the above mentioned terms and reduce the quarterly dues by the amount we are currently paying for cable for the remainder of the year. Second. second. Marilyn seconds. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Great job on that, Rhonda. I think it's important to note as well, and correct me if I'm wrong, cable service ends June 30th. There's no more extensions. Um, and so everybody's going to be on their own to live stream uh, as, as of the 1st of July. Uh, and uh, as Ron indicated, we're going to do everything we can to um, help the residents that need help with people like Steve and others in the community that are well-versed uh, in how to do that and uh, and help us through the process. I know many of uh, many of our residents have already switched to other carriers or are doing their live streaming. Um, but I think the key factor too is that uh, the residents are going to get, uh, uh, you know, we're going to take care of the dues moving forward. We have to figure out how to do that because uh, we're we're already into this quarter. Uh, but we will reduce the dues accordingly with which what the residents were paying for television. So that helps offset any costs that they may have for uh, streaming. And I will add on that last note, we will need to do something overly formalistic, but it's not really an option. We would have to amend our current budget. There'll be um, a notification uh, according to state statute that provides a certain notice um, and we cannot achieve that by June 1st or next quarter. So what we will do is reduce the final quarter to reflect June, um, I'm the sorry, July, July, August, and September. So you'll get a much more significant reduction, and you'll be on plenty of notice for that, and that will go and offset the amount that you have to do for any selection of streaming services. And, and, and I just want to highlight this point because it's very, very important because we were actively involved in these negotiations. We met weekly with our council, and the RFP committee was vital to, to move the needle. I mean, we negotiated hard, but the RFP committee provided a lot of substance. They knew we meant business to go, altern, go in a completely different route, that we were uh, confident in our legal position, and they put a lot of work into this. And... Um, Frankly, I just want to convey how critical that was to our success in this. But I also think, Steve, correct me if I'm wrong, but, you know, we came down to a fairly viable option um, for bulk services. However, we couldn't get any 11th hour promises from them on some of the concerns we had regarding their contract um, and the length of contract. One thing that I think this whole board agrees with we weren't going to get into another 10-year deal on cable services because I don't believe cable will even be around in 10 years. But um, And then there were just a couple other issues that we couldn't get answers on in time to get anything done. But I think it leaves the door open that if they come back at some future point and say, we can give you everything you want, we can bring them back to the community and say, we do have a bulk service agreement right now. And if the community wants to go back that way, we can go back that way. Please. 
is that uh, part of the CenturyLink uh, contract is that they have what we call gratis services, and that includes our clubhouse and all of its infrastructure, the office networks, and so on. Those have all been upgraded to a gigabit uh, symmetrical. They went ahead and did that. They, they've changed their policy. So, you know, at least our office and the clubhouse facilities have a, a really solid backbone. What they won't have, though, is TV services. Uh, that will have to be arranged. We'll have to figure out technically how to do that now that uh, the clubhouses are coming to fruition. I will, I will tell you that I checked my speed at home the other day, and I have 650 megabits up. And 125 down. I don't know why, but you know they, they've been fooling with the system. Yeah, I think they're afraid of you, Steve. I think so. You yeah. spent a lot of time in the clubhouse, and they yes. know who you are. So I'm not surprised at this <laughs> at all. Well, I hope everything goes well. We we have cleared out the electrical room. So hopefully, all the inspections can be made without any difficulty. And, and that was a job. We opened this. And there was so much equipment in there, just covered in dust, that we had no idea what it was. And frankly, I shut the door. <laughs> I did not want hundreds of wires. And then came Steve. And uh, so. frankly, uh, it was an absolute mess. It would have cost us a significant amount of money to bring some experts in here. And Steve is an engineer, frankly, and he took his time and helped us significantly. And I didn't, even, you know, I should have mentioned that in my report. No, so okay. thank you for that too, because it was a significant amount of time. The only thing left is, uh, of course, we've got the, the, the uh, it's not called music anymore. Mood it's media. Mood media. Uh, they're going to give us some new equipment for our sound at the pool. And uh, do a TV. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Anything else, Ron? Thank you very much for uh, you. your hard efforts on this. And uh, we're, uh, we're lucky to have you on our board. and as a licensed Florida attorney yourself to be able to look at these things not only in the best interest of Sandoval and practicality but also from a legal basis as well so we appreciate your uh, tireless efforts on that project okay we'll, uh, we'll, we'll take questions at at the end okay thank you um, we, are we going to on my understanding under old business the lakes Committee, we received a pretty fair amount, but I haven't seen any resumes. And I think before we make any approvals, I think the board needs to look at who's Same for the landscape committee. Those names for landscaping. We'll yeah. reach back out to them, ask for more information. Yeah, and forward that to for the landscaping them. committee. Yes, and what, on the lakes committee, lakes and landscape. Lakes and landscaping. Okay. So uh, I'm going to turn it back over to you, Casey, on the. Salt cells of the community pool. So Alpha Pool came to us. The salt cell has been out and it needs to be replaced. Um, and so the proposal and ASAP uh, special projects. Uh, Jim was informed. The board was informed. It's going to be ten thousand one seventy eight forty one, and that does include um, installation on there. Uh, so a bar would need to be approved. The reserve payment was going to be authorized. Treasurer Tub, money in the reserves available for that? Our request? And it, it doesn't appear that this is an issue that can wait. No. Correct. Any other questions, comments? Entertain a motion for a bar request. Ron? I'm talking well, I, what would be the bar request specifically? Yeah. Bar request to replace the salt cells at the community pool. Do we have a cap in terms of what the Do we have a price of 10178.41? All in. Um, do we want ten that we want to make a motion for twelve thousand? And uh, part of that motion would be to um, obviously uh, any any amount that we don't spend goes back into reserves, just to make sure there isn't any extras. We would need to do a bar. Fine. Yeah. 
second. I'll second. Is that Casey? No, Marilyn Casey second. Twelve thousand. Questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. We'll move along to the uh, Tiki Hut repairs at the Boxy Ball Courts. This has been a, a long time coming request. Uh, you yeah. all have been presented the proposals. We will need to update these um, since they were last year. Uh, however, they should be in line still with the pricing that came in. So you have three proposals. This is only for the four Tiki huts at the Bocce Court area. There's photos attached and you all have the proposals. Uh, the one that's way off is the Native American Cheeky gives a 12-year warranty. And then they also were comparable to the other proposals where they dropped it down to just the five-year warranty. So that's what the big jump is on that proposal. And then uh, Southern Cross came in at the lowest at 4,800. And then second was Seminole Tiki Huts at 5,800. I'm sorry, second was Native American at 5,600, and then the last was Seminole Tiki Huts. Any of, the, any of these companies provide a warranty, or is this even? They, they each do provide a five-year warranty, no holes or leaks. Um, this one has a six-month pesticide spray with it, which is, um, uh, let's see, six, 800 more than the lowest proposal. And um, this one also has a five-year warranty and one-year warranty on the thatching. No, I don't see any treatments. And I'm not even, I'm not an expert on these. I don't know if treatments are needed or. Southern Cross did the Tiki Hut, the most recent one for the. The pool attendant. For the pool attendants. They did that one. Okay, great. Did they do a good job? Mm -hmm. yeah. Is the uh, major difference between the 10,400 from Native American because it's using synthetic fronds versus the uh, palm thatch? Is that why there's so much of a difference? Mm, I'm not. I don't think so. I think it's the, it's the, warranty. the warranty, it's warranty is, is what 12 years. our yeah. understanding is. Okay. Oh, it is. Oh, I see what you're saying. The yeah. difference yeah, is that one of the reasons why there's. Yes, yes, yes. Right. Why it gets lower. And do you remember when these were installed? The current. The huts there. It's a while. Okay. That's what I don't know why I'm thinking 2012, but I didn't know if you knew. Okay. It, it is. It wasn't. It wasn't that uh, new because we moved in in uh, 2000, January 2014. Okay. And so it was at least 2014 when they. Okay. They were done then, They. That's probably when it was done. So, okay, so they've lasted fourteen fifty a, a, a long time. Yeah. So, is the recommendation Southern Cross? Is that what I'm hearing? That's, I can, I, can I raise a point? The sure. um, the tiki huts, the tiki huts are addressed in the reserve study, and they're provided for in the twenty twenty three um, cost. There's thirteen thousand dollars allocated for twenty twenty three for renovations. So if action is taken now to repair the thatching of the four tiki huts, that money Casey would come out of this reserve line item. Is that is that true? Or is that the plan? Under a pool, um, Bill can come up. Bill would like to speak. 
You're right in that date. It's calling for 2023, $13,000. That is not just thatching. Yeah, that yeah. is for the whole bocce ball complex. The next rep repair is to be in 2033. So if you do a repair in 2021, instead of <coughs> lasting 10 years, it's going to have to last 13 years that uh -huh. you do. But yes, that, it would come from that line item. Do you know how much of that is currently funded? The line item? It's all funded. 13,000. 13, so it's completely funded even though it's due in for. two years? There's, there is, we don't have statutory reserves, so it's not like $50 is going into it this month and $50 into another line. It's one pool, so we have that pool to be used when we need to use it. We don't have them broken down based on percentages? I mean, how The money? We, the yeah, the balance? I, no. That's odd to me. No, it's, it's just we have reserves. We have X amount of dollars. The reserve study says you should spend this many dollars this year, this many okay. dollars next year, this many dollars next year. Okay. They break down where it those dollars should be spent, but we just have one pool of money, and it's it, we don't have... Of the $2 million in reserves, we don't have $8,000 for bocce ball courts. It's it's one pool of $2 million. Where does that put us in terms of our per year expense? Then? As I said earlier, on the 10000 for the SALT, the board may need to start looking at, are we underfunding because of what we're taking out this year versus what we're putting in? We now may be in a deficit for reserves going forward, and the, this board may have to adjust how we're funding it, either through um, homeowner contributions, through their assessments, or through an increased capital contribution, or whatever other thing the board comes up with. So keep that in mind, that as you do this, you may have to address that as well. well could the Finance Committee give us an update in terms of where we're at, um, in terms of our uh, how much we spent that's allocated <coughs> specific for this year? Um, and relative to our income. You don't need the finance committee to do that. Uh, Casey can do that. She can tell you what's been spent out of reserves in 2021. Uh, and if there are any other projects scheduled to come out of it in 2021, and I think it's been 171,000 has been funded into reserves through May 31st. So it depends on how many sales, how many more, how much more will be put into it in 2021. Do you know how much um, we needed to have in by May 31st in order to be on target in terms of sales contributions? It's, it's, it's an annual thing. It's not a monthly thing. Well, there's a percentage, though. I mean, we're... If you wanted to say 40% of, of the annual amount, yeah, it's in the reserve study that you have. Yeah. Do you know? Frankly, do, we, do we know where we're at for ahead of schedule or behind schedule? I know there's been a significant amount of sales this year. Would you like me to get the papers out and look well, at it? We can just discuss. My point is, we can discuss this and make sure we have this information for for our next meeting. And uh, right. because well, this well, will that, become more what, important, what when we have more borrowers. And what I'm saying is, as you pass this, you need to have in the back of your mind that we need to have the discussion that you're talking about. Sure. That was my point. Take it. Questions or comments? Anyone care to make a motion? Do we have the batching on the tiki huts? And um, would you just have to refresh? I'm happy to make the motion. I would just have to refresh my memory in terms of the amount that we want. Make sure we have a sufficient case? amount to cover any possible contingencies. 4,800 is the lowest proposal from the contractor that did the most recent Tiki Hut. And uh, is the recommendation that we received that particular contractor? So yeah, that was, we didn't see any reason yeah. why. Okay. Well, then I'll make a motion. Um, do we expect there to be any um, cost overruns? Um, okay. Well, a maximum of six thousand. Do you think that would be sufficient? Okay. 
Therefore, um, I, I'd like to move to make a bar request for uh, Southern Cross um, to repair um, the, uh, the tiki huts in the bocce ball court, um, not to exceed uh, $6,000. Is it to repair or to replace the thatching? Replace, just rethatch existing. So we're doing complete the wall. Replace what you thatch and haul off the tree. Correct. All right. Ready, second? I'll second. I'll second. And that's with I'm Southern with Cross. That. Yeah, I'm a lot of stuff. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? It, what was the, the amount, the cap? 6000 Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Kathy, opposed? Motion Excuse carries. me. In answer to no, Ron's, I said aye. In answer to Ron's question, I'm sorry. the reserve study costs for $361,400 to be contributed in 2021. Uh, if you divide that by 12, multiply it times 5 to get to the end of May, that's 150,583.33, and we're at 171. So we're actually a little above it at this point in time, assuming sales continue. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We'll uh, move on to the fun umbrella replacements. Replacement. Uh, so we originally presented to the board a request to replace two fun umbrellas that uh, during last hurricane season were not able to drop them down. So they stayed open and they were already damaged and they just get worse and worse and I think it's a liability. So we received uh, one of them is in worse condition. So the actual estimate that you received uh, a couple, or yesterday, whenever the board packet came over the day before, mm -hmm. it's actually four thousand three seventy sixty eight to replace one fun umbrella. Uh, to do both of them was the seven thousand one fifty six fifty five. So I, at this time, if you see the photo that I had attached, these these bars you can't actually. This is stripped here. Um, it can't be repaired at this time. It's been broke for. A long time and with hurricane season I'd like you now both of them like this or just no the, the other one has the cover there so yeah. this one is yeah, yeah it's bad yeah, that one also. so I think with this one though I was there were some projects and the repairs and maintenance item in the budget uh, for items, so I believe that this one could fall under repairs and maintenance items for the community. Uh, I'm pretty confident it could be covered there. Uh, but there are reserves for pool furniture, for sure. So... Comments? Sound more like a repair and maintenance situation to me than it does going back and tapping our reserves again. Um, Riverside did receive a, a comment from a resident was wondering why we were going with blue as opposed to yeah. any other color on the rainbow. And uh, I'm not opening that can of worms here. I want to explain why we're going with the blue. For one, it's a, the existing color that is there. So it's not like anyone's picking a new color. Um, and then also with the uh, shade area at the playground does tie in. And then you have some other blue uh, throughout the smaller umbrellas. Uh, so that's why uh, the blue was chosen. What's the entire amount again? Uh, 4370.68. I'll entertain a motion. To, to, uh, uh, yeah. to repair Fair the umbrella. Right. Through repairs and maintenance. Okay. Mm -hmm. Second. Lori seconded. Second. 
questions? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Opposed? Oh, motion carries. Uh, thanks for your work on sharing these and getting this stuff on the, I'm get the pool and the box of courts. <laughs> My understanding, too, getting back to box reports, that we have um, what we're in the process of all the areas are going to be cleaned and mold taken away from the benches and tables. And then we, our maintenance man has replaced or repaired any obvious tripping hazards. You know, we have some other issues there, but that's just not in the budget right now to, 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 to redo the entire uh, pavers at, at the box courts. Okay. And then the last one, I, you, I sent all, everyone this, the foam stone in the Veterans Monument sign. There's pineapples mm -hmm. decor there. We have missing, some have uh, just fallen off. The installation wasn't great. They were installed in three different pieces. So I did have a company come out and um, give us a estimate to repair those pineapples. Um and that comes in at a thousand dollars. It is the company I asked Stevens Construction when they were doing the pineapple in the clubhouse, so they referred that company to us. So it's an aesthetic thing. It's your uh, entry to the community. For me, I, it caught my eye as soon as <clears throat> my first time coming in to interview. So uh, it would be a repairs and maintenance item as well. Any questions, Casey, on that? Need to do it. Right. I'll entertain a motion to. Aye. And motion to. Need to make the motion second. Ron second. And that thousand dollars is a current. We'll do repairs and maintenance. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Anything else, Casey? No, um, just working. I've reached out to the concrete pad company for the dog park area. I've not gotten any response back, so that is still in the works. And um, did fun umbrella. And then we do have some fines, um, $100 that you were all were presented, $100 a dog off the leash, $100 painting and stucco repair, $100 dead sod, dead sod. Hundred dollar march down uh, mulch <laughs> uh, down the sides of the house. A hundred dollar mulch and a hundred dollar overnight parking in the street. So the parking in the street potentially would be something that was um, going prior to the towing, and so looking for a resolution, the compliance uh, coordinator would have started that. So these were all voted from the covenants committee to find. These residents here. Your recommendation is to find? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Entertain a motion to accept the Covenants Committee recommendation. The minister defines. I'll make the motion. Ron makes the motion. Second. I'll second. Lori seconds. Questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Um, just to add a comment, um, as you may have heard, we have been uh, aggressively towing overnight vehicles parked on the street for the last two weeks. We've probably towed a dozen to a dozen and a half vehicles. Um, and fortunately, Casey and the office are getting the, uh, the adverse calls on that and uh, not the board members because I haven't heard anybody. Uh, but, you know. If you're parked on the street, you're parked on the street. Everybody was given plenty of notice. Uh, we've uh, had some bumps in the road with our security company, but I think we're all on the same sheet of music now. And we have them, again, laser focused on the, the overnight parking issue. And, you know, we hope the, the, tenants, the residents will get the picture and, and that uh, we'll get that resolved here in, in the near future. Um, secondly, I received a uh, an email from... Um, uh, attorney Caves, and I just wanted to, he received an email from an attorney in our community that had a question that he was 
somebody had told him that if it, uh, if a person he was representing that lives in Sandoval had a, for lack of a better term, a golf cart that was street legal, licensed, registration, able to drive on city streets, uh, that there's no there's no way that Sandoval could prohibit that vehicle being driven in Sandoval. So if it is a street legal vehicle, it is permitted to be driven on the streets of Sandoval by a licensed driver, not a 12-year-old. So I just wanted to make that clar clarification for the community. Solicitation for any additional agenda items? Ma'am, you had a question? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. So we, I did, we did follow up with that with down to earth. So they're, they measured, they're replacing the sod of the dead area. No, they've already worked through the whole last week and the week before measuring and ordering. So I'll get you an exact date um, for that. Sure. Yeah, there's several areas that they're replacing, no cost to the association. I'm in my yard too. Okay, I'll get you a date for that sod replacement. Okay. Sure. May I ask a question about towing? Yes. I just have a question. Uh, in the reports that come out nightly, they say towing dispatched. Is towing dispatched meaning they have called the towing company, or yes. does it actually mean that they have towed the vehicle? They've called the towing company to tow the vehicle. Now, what can happen is if the resident comes out, and this has happened on several occasions for all of them, they're getting ready to hook up, and they pull their car in the driveway, then the car may not, won't get towed. But my understanding is once the hook is on a car, you're paying the towing okay. company. And then they, uh, they, they will yeah. say it's towed versus Right, it's towed, dispatch. yes. Okay. So when Thank that's you. recorded on the report, a tow was called for for that particular vehicle. Another issue came up where Casey asked me for uh, uh, confirmation today. Uh, we're getting cars. I think some of our tenants can feel they can outsmart us, so they're parking two wheels on the grass mm -hmm. and two on the street. That's going to get towed. So that's oh. still considered a vehicle parked on the street if you've got two wheels on the street. So I confirmed that with Casey today to confirm with the security company that that's a towable offense as well. What we're not doing is towing cars out of driveways or if they're parked on their front yard or things of that nature, we're going to give warnings for that. And, you know, we can still go through the fine process for violating the, uh, the codes. But, I don't uh, think they can park in their yard, can they? No, they can't, but they do. Um, so. I mean, that's even against the city. Right. Um, there's two items I'd like to just add. Okay. So one is a clarification uh, with you, Casey, that um, tomorrow we'll send out um, emails to every resident if we can, Twitter, Facebook, whatever medium we can use and every medium we can use to convey that um, cable will be terminated at the end of this month um, and then send up follow-up emails uh, next week also as a reminder. So everyone's put on notice um, and ex also give them an explanation of where we're going in terms of Internet service. Um, the other thing I'd like to add is I just wanted to take the time to say uh, thank you to Allison. Uh, she was our landscaping chair who recently stepped down. Um, I'm personally saddened by her departure, but frankly, I'm overjoyed um, with the impact she's had on our community. She's devoted so much time to the health and diversity and vitality of our landscaping. Um, some examples, she completely redesigned the veterans' entrance, every single plant location she spent so much time to make sure and so much care to make sure it was done with such care um, she took on many many projects to bring our standards back up so I just want to personally say thank you and let her know that she'll be missed that's all thank you. 
Gary, I just want to raise um, for the ad hoc committees, we skipped risk management. It's on the agenda, but um, we didn't address it. So what I wanted to add was, um, although the risk management committee did not meet during the month, um, there has been follow up discussions with the general manager on some of the areas identified in the periodic community inspection regarding fencing, the crosswalks, the paving, and with Mr. Swigert on the street lamps that were blocked with the, um, the tree foliage. So um, again, monitoring the cures and the um, actions taken to resolve the issues that were raised in the periodic report. Questions to Kathy? Thank you, Kathy. Okay. Any other items of interest anybody has? I'll enter. Uh, do we have any uh, open forum? No open forum request. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Anita, second. Second by Ron. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. We appreciate your attention. Appreciate your attention.